sadness is a part of human experience. But for centuries, there has been a vast disagreement over what exactly it is and what, if anything, to do about it. In its simplest term, sadness is often thought of as the natural reaction to a difficult situation. You, you feel sad when a friend moves away or when a pet dies. So when a friend says, I'm sad, you often respond by asking what happened. But your assumption that sadness has, uh, is, is that the sadness has an external cause outside of the self, and that is actually a relatively new idea. Ancient Greek doctors didn't view uh, sadness that way. They believed it was a dark fluid inside the, inside the body. According to their humoral system, the human body and soul were controlled by four fluids known as humors, and their, their, their balance directly in influenced a person's health and temperament. Melancholia comes from the word uh, malina ko, the word for black bile, the uh, humor a Jews believed to cause that sadness. So by changing your diet and through medical practices, you could bring your humors uh, into balance. But even though we know much more about the systems that govern the human body, these Greek ideas about sadness resonate with current views, not on the sadness we all occasionally feel, but something different, which is clinical depression. Doctors believe that uh, certain kinds of long-term unexplained emotional states are at least partially related to brain chemistry. Uh, the balance of various chemicals present inside the brain. Like the Greek system, changing the balance of these chemicals can deeply alter how we, re how we respond to uh, even uh, extremely difficult circumstances. There's also a long tradition of attempting to discern the value of sadness and in that discussion you'll find a strong argument that sadness is not only an inevitable part of life but an essential one. If you've never felt melancholy you have missed out on part of what it means to be human which which means nobody has missed it many thinkers contend that melancholy is necessary in gaining wisdom robert burton born in 1577 spent his whole life studying the causes and experiences of sadness in his masterpiece the anatomy of melancholy burton wrote he that increaseth wisdom increaseth sorrow so the romantic poets also of the early 19th century believed melancholy allows us to more deeply understand other profound emotions like beauty and joy. To understand the sadness of the trees losing their leaves in the fall is to more fully understand the cycle of life that brings flowers in the spring. But wisdom and emotional intelligence seem pretty high on the hierarchy of needs. Does, does sadness have value on a more basic, tangible level? Scientists sometimes think that crying and feeling withdrawn is what originally helped our ancestors to secure uh, those social bonds and help them to uh, get the support that they needed. Sadness as opposed, to, as opposed to anger or violence was an expression of suffering that could immediately bring people closer to the suffering person and this helped both the person and the larger community to uh, come closer with each other. Some contemporary thinkers aren't interested in, in sadness's sub subjectivity versus universality and would rather use technology to eliminate suffering in all its forms. David Pierce has suggested that genetic engineering and other contemporary processes can not only alter the way humans experiences, uh, experience emotional pain, but that world ecosystem ought to be redesigned so that animals don't suffer in the wild. So, we see how people across ages with different time zone or uh, in different times have tried to understand this complex yet simple idea of sadness. In fact, the only things about sadness that seems universally agreed upon are that it has been felt by most people throughout time and that for thousands of years one of the best, best ways we have to deal with this uh, difficult emotion is to articulate, to try to express which often seems inexpressible. And in the words of Emily Dickinson, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all.